today our ATS is titled God is able hallelujah God is able is the able God reliable dependable unsearchable is the able God tell somebody God is able yes so we're going to be reading taking our text from Ephesians chapter 3 and in verse 20 you know when I was I was meditating on the topic I was like who am I to even speak about the ability of God this this God is just too too great too powerful what can I say about his ability about his power I can only you know just scratch a little of it God is the all powerful God Ephesians 3 verse 20 now to him who is able somebody say he is able now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power that work within us to him be the glory in church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever is able to do far 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 more abundantly exceedingly beyond what you can ever ask or imagine that is there is nothing that is too big there is nothing that is intimidating no matter how how big your thoughts are or your your request is it doesn't intimidate god because he's able to handle everything in fact is more than able in fact is exceedingly abundantly above anything anything that threatens you that troubles you that stands and as an opposition this god is a god that is full of might is full of power so when we talk about God is able, we are talking about his power. We are talking about his dunamis. We are talking about his dynamic power that is able to produce change. His dynamic power that is able to bring result. That is what we are dealing with today. Let's go further into the Bible and see more about the power of this God. Let's go to the book of Psalm 24. Psalm 24, this is a class. If you find it before me, you can please read. Psalm 24, verse 8. Okay, I'm just going to read it from verse 7. He said, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. And who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. He is the able God. He is the king of glory. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Let's travel further to Psalm, Psalm 62. We're just studying the Bible, seeing how powerful, how dynamic our God is. Psalm 62, verse 11. Scripture says, once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God. Power belongs to God. Glory, grace, power belongs to him. His power is unlimited. Is unlimited. Psalm 147. We're going to read verse 5. Psalm 147, verse 5. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. That's what we're talking about today. Great is our God. He is what? Abundant is in power. His understanding is beyond measure. Hmm. immeasurable, immeasurable, great and abundant, 
plentiful in power. Hallelujah. Let's see the book of Jeremiah, chapter 32, verse 27. If you find it again before me, you can read Jeremiah 32, verse 27. Thank you. Hmm. Imagine that. That's the question God was asking Jeremiah. He said, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? The same question is coming to you and to me this morning. Behold, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything, anything, any situation, any mountain, anything too hard for me to do? God is the source of all power, both in the physical and in the spiritual realm. And you know the spiritual realm in fact, the amount of power, the amount of operations that go on there is, is beyond, you know, human comprehension. But God controls power, both in the physical and the spiritual realm. He is called the omnipotent one. He possesses infinite, complete, and perfect power. You know, we have people in the world that are powerful. We have men of strength. We have men that really have might, but no matter how powerful a man is, he is still what? Limited. He is still limited. He gets weary at times. He gets tired at some point. He gets weak at some point. But we serve a God who has unlimited ability and is able to do anything and he's able to do everything that he wills. Look at the book of Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, we're going to see in verse 28. Men in the, their best form, in their greatest form, they are still limited. But we have a God who is unlimited. Scripture says, have you not known, have you not heard that the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He does not faint. He does not grow weary. <laughs> he does not get tired. He does not get weak. He does not faint. He does not grow weary. His power is unsearchable. His understanding is unsearchable. And now he gives power to those that are faint. He gives strength. He gives might. He gives strength to those that are weary. And when he introduced himself to Abraham, he says, I am God Almighty. I am not just mighty. I am what? Almighty. So that shows the power, the ability of this God that we serve. How, how can we see, you know, the power of this God? We can see it in his creation. We can see it in the entire universe. Just taking a look at the things he created around us, you see the demonstration of his ability. In the book of Psalm 33, verse 6, it says, By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth, all their host, for he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and he stood first, fast. God sustains the world with his words. So he created with words. He just spoke it, and it came into actualization. Let there be and there was. Scripture says he called those things that be not as though there were. So he created this entire word with the words of his mouth. Imagine scientific uh, innovations. You know how long it takes man to be able to create something and put it to the test over and over and over and over before he's able to produce something that, you know, 
will now gain relevance in the world. But look at this God. He began to speak. He began to declare it by the words of his mouth, showing his ability, showing his power, that he is the great and the mighty God. And he didn't just create that world. He sustains it by his word. Look at Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 17. Jeremiah was talking to God. He said, ha, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power, by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for you. I'm here this morning to encourage you as I encourage myself. I'm here this morning to tell you that you have a God who is able. You have a God with whom nothing, nothing, nothing is difficult for you. Look at the vastness of the universe. Look at the galaxy containing billions of stars. And those stars, you know, when we did geography, they would tell us that, that one star is bigger than the earth. I can't imagine it. I don't know how that can be, but he is God. You know, he, he created everything and he placed them in their zones. He gave them limits. He gave them boundaries. Okay, this is where you should occupy. Don't go beyond this fair. Don't go be beyond this place. Imagine the sun deciding to change its position and saying, I want to come down. And I want to visit the inhabitants of the earth. You know that is going to be disastrous. But this almighty God, he designed everything so perfectly. He designed everything so beautifully. He created the oceans, the seas, the rivers, the water bodies, separated them from each other. And he gave everything boundaries. He said, ocean, this is where you, 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 your boundary ends, okay? Don't go beyond this point. And you see that when the water dances to that point, it will retreat and goes back. Our God is great. Even look at yourself. Look at the complexity of your human body. Just imagine, take a moment to think about all the intricate parts of your being. How God handled everything, how God designed everything. All of these is just to tell you how great is our God, how mighty he is, how gigantic he is in power and in glory. Imagine the tiny flies. You know, some of them is even very, very hard for you to see. Sometimes it's only when you feel the pinch, you know, you just tap it. They are so tiny, yet they reproduce, yet they carry on activities. And consider that same God. He created the mighty whales in the ocean. He created the elephants, the big and the small. Such a great and a mighty God. The brightness of the sun that can blind somebody. You can't just stare into the sun, right? Look at the water, so powerful that is able to wash away human civilization. Look at the wind, so powerful. It's able to uproot trees. It's able to remove houses. That is the greatness of this God. That is the power of this God. We see his ability in all that he has created. We see his ability in saving sinners. Paul said, he saved sinners of whom I am chief. Look at a man like Paul. If God could win him, if God could change him in just a moment with just an encounter, that God is a great God. We have heard testimonies of people so lost in evil, in cultism, in negative things. They were so bad. They were so terrible. But God transformed them. God turned them into a new man. I want to tell you, wherever you're hearing me from, that God is able are you dwelling in sin? Are you sinking? God is able to bring you out. God is able to give you a brand new start. God is able to give you a brand new life. We see God's ability in judging his enemies. And interestingly, this is our month where we are dealing with the enemies of our performance. If you read through the scripture, you read through the Bible, you see God rising up, rising up in power, rising up in glory to defeat the enemies of his people. Look at the case of Pharaoh. Let me just mention a few. Pharaoh and, and, the, and the children of Israel, you know, last week Apostle was telling us that, you know, when the, the, the Red Sea closed up together, the people of 
uh, Pharaoh and his chariots, they were already going into the sea. And when they saw that the, the sea was closing up, very, very quickly, they tried to retreat. They tried to turn back, but the Lord swept them. It was like God pulling them. Hey, where are you going to? Come back. Come back into that ocean. So that is the great and the mighty power of God, just to deliver his children. Look at David and Goliath. Just little just little day. Name in the name just with a tiny stone. What is that that stands before you? What is that problem that for you that is able to give you the victory? Deliverance you seek. Look at the case of the Moabites, the Ammonites, they came against Jehoshaphat and the children of Israel. God told them, just Praise me. They began to God sent an ambush against the enemies. And I love the way the Bible put it. The Bible said they helped to destroy one another. So the enemies turned against themselves through the power and the might of the Almighty, the one who is the strong and the terrible one, the one who never retrieves in battle. He rose up and he began to fight. He turned the enemies against themselves. Look at the ark of God that was taken to the place where Dagon was. Dagon, the God, the lifeless God was there and the ark of God was taken captive and brought before Dagon and God said, I am the almighty. I cannot stand before a lifeless God. Never. Dagon is coming down and when Dagon came down, the people came back, they brought him up the next morning and God said, hey, these people do not know me. I am the God that is full of power. I am the God that is full of might. He said, my right hand is become strong in power. My right hand is able to save and save to the uttermost. And he brought down Dagon a second time. They came back and they said, uh -uh, our God, no, 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 you cannot be down. They brought him up again. And this time God said, what? What do you mean? That's an insult to me. And God began to shatter Dagon from head and his legs and his arms. Everything went into different places. Was broken broken into pieces and the people say hey what we have here is something mighty and terrible even though it was just a box even though it was just a representation God said I am the God of all flesh is there anything too hard for me look at Nebuchadnezzar in all of his pride <laughs> God decided to humble him God decided to bring him down. Look at Elijah and the prophets of Baal. Elijah said, let the God that answers by fire be God indeed. And the God that answers by fire proved himself. How many can I mention? How many can I talk about? The Bible is full of examples. And even in our present times, even in our present days, enemies of the children of God are brought under captivity by the power of the Almighty. I'm here this morning to announce to you what is that challenge facing you? What is that mountain intimidating you? What is that problem that is causing you tears? What is that challenge that is causing pain in your heart? I tell you, your God is strong and mighty. Your God is the Almighty One. His power is available today and every enemy of your performance will be brought down in the name of Jesus. God's power is sin when we are not able to help ourselves. When we come to our wit's end, God steps in and takes over the battle. <laughs> when we get to the point and we say, God, I'm, I'm growing weary. My strength, my ability is not able to take me. Lord, the situation is too tough. Lord, it appears the enemies are becoming stronger than me. God said, no, 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 I am here, my daughter. I am here, my son. I'm standing by you. I am the Olubeja. You know what Olubeja is? He said, I am your defender. I will not let you down. I will not let you fall. Look at Abraham and Sarah. How come God intervened? at a point where everybody thought it was 
over for them at a time where everybody thought it was impossible. Even Abraham had to help God at some point when he saw that, is this going to ever be? But God still proved himself as the great and mighty God. He directed Moses and the Israelites through a path where they will face the Red Sea. Maybe he should have taken them through another path. Why do they have to face the Red Sea? And then the enemies are just behind them. And they were right at the, at the middle saying, oh my God, this is, this is the end of it all. He wanted to show his power. He wanted to show his ability. You know, this God we serve likes to show off. He likes to show himself. He likes to prove that I am God and I am able to handle it. He said, Moses, why are these people crying to me? Come on, move forward. You people don't know who I am. I am the great and the terrible one. Ah, look at Elisha when he was surrounded by the king of Aram. Horses and chariots. They came to take him captive and his servant was terrified. His servant was like, oh my God. Ah, master, see what, what's, what's surrounding us. And God said, open his eyes, oh Lord. Let him see that they that are with us are greater than they that are with them. Look at the Virgin Mary when God said, you're going to have a child. And he said, I, I, I know not a man. How is this going to be? How is this going to be? She was puzzled. She asked questions. But the Almighty God, the Almighty God intervened. Look at Elizabeth. Look at Hannah. Stories are there in the Bible and even in our present times of mighty and great things that God has done when human beings gave up, when people thought it was over, when people said this is death all, all over me and God said, no, you're not dying, you're living. I'm going to stand in and I'm going to work for your good. Ah, God is able. Can you turn to your neighbor? Say, God is able. What are some things scripture tells us he's able to do? I'm going to rush through it because of time. He's able to save us completely. Save to the uttermost. Save to the uttermost. Hebrews 7 verse 25. He's able to keep us from sin. Is able to keep us from falling. The Bible says he himself was tempted. And so he's able to succor us when we are tempted. He's able to make us stand. Romans 14 verse 4. God is able to supply our every need. What is it that you need today? Your God is able. My God is able. This same God is able to heal our diseases. What is that sickness that faces you? Matthew 9 verse 28. He's able, he's able, he's able, he's able. Jesus told that man, if you can believe, all things are possible. The man said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. And Jesus intervened. Jesus stepped in. Jesus is able. God is able to deliver us from death. He is able to deliver us from danger. We got a very great teaching last week about the fourth man in the fire. How God stepped in and brought out the three Hebrew men from the fairy flames. God is able. What is that fire that is burning today? God is able to deliver you. Daniel spent an entire night in the den of lions. King Darius, he came in the morning. Oh, Daniel, as the God whom you serve, the God whom you pray to night and day, be able to deliver you from the mouth of the lion. And Daniel answered, oh, yes, the God I serve is an able God. He was able. He is able. He has delivered me. He has shut the mouth of the lion. He has shut the mouth of the devourer. I pray for you today as I pray for myself also that every lion, every negative situation that treaded threatens us, the almighty God will shut their mouths off in the name of Jesus. God's power is available to strengthen your inner man. He's able to give you strength in your inner man. 
is able to give you strength in your inner being. Are you losing strength already? Are you getting tired? Yes, I told us at the beginning that even the best of men, even the strongest of men, even the most anointed of men, we get tired, we get weary, but our God never gets weary. So he's able to give you renewal. He's able to give you renewal. He's able to charge up your inner man again. Whatever it is that you desire of him, God is able. He's able to give comfort to those that are heavy hearted. He's able to give peace to the troubled heart. He's able. Do you want to enjoy his power? Do you want to enjoy his ability? Now let's consider just a few things that you need to do. Number one, Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. I love this scripture. Second Chronicles chapter 16 and in verse 9. If you find it, you can read. Okay, I found it. Say, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to give strong support to those whose heart is blameless. Wow. Strong support. Let me read it from King James Version. It says, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. So it's not just the devil that is moving to and fro. <laughs> the eyes of our God only his eyes is enough to do the job. His eyes is moving to and fro throughout the earth. He's, he wants to show himself. I told you he likes to show his power. He likes to show his ability. But to those whose hearts are perfect before him. So that is the condition number one. If you want him to show his power, you want to see his power, let your heart and your allegiance to him be undivided. God is looking for people he can help. Yes. God is looking for people he can show his ability in their lives. He will find you. He will find me. And he will show himself as the strong and the mighty one in the name of Jesus. Number two, wait on him patiently and prayerfully. Don't give up. Don't give up. Wait on him patiently and prayerfully. Wait on him. Wait on him. Even the young ones, they will grow weary. Isaiah chapter 40. They will grow tired. But scripture says those that wait on the Lord, they will renew their strength. Because he's a God of great ability. As you are holding on to him and you are patiently waiting, he's beginning to release strength into you. He's beginning to release ability into you. Number three, Keep your faith alive. Keep your faith alive. All things are possible to him that believe it. And finally, keep praising him. Keep praising him. Do not lose your joy. Do not let anything take your joy away. Because that joy is your strength. Don't you get it? The joy of the Lord is your strength. So when that joy is gone, it means strength is gone. It means strength is gone. So the devil fights you. He wants to take that joy away from you. But you must make up your mind that no, 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 nothing is going to take my joy. God is able. Tell somebody, God is able. There is no deficiency in his power. Even if he chooses not to answer, even if he chooses not to do it, it's not because he's limited in ability. It's not because he's limited in power. It's only because he has something better. It's only because he sees something greater for you. And so he chooses not to do it the way you want it. But he's eventually, at the end of the day, going to bring it out in a very, very beautiful way. Right now, God is looking for people 
through whom he can showcase his ability. Why not let him know you are available? Close your eyes and say, Lord, I am available. He has grace enough for you. He has power enough for you. He has strength more than enough for you. Why not say, God, show your power through me today. Lord, I believe you are able. Demonstrate your ability in my life. Demonstrate your ability in my family. Demonstrate your ability in my situation. Demonstrate your ability, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Show yourself as the strong and mighty one. Show yourself as the almighty, the great I am, the able God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, we worship you. We celebrate you, almighty Father. We give you thanks, we give you glory, because you are the able God. You are the mighty Father. You are the unchangeable changer. The God of all flesh is anything too hard for you to do. You are the God of all flesh. The one that created everything out of the words of his mouth. The one that called those things that be not as though they were. The one that is strong and mighty to save. The one that saves to the uttermost. The one that rides on the the wings of the morning, the ones that gave the oceans and the seas their boundaries, the almighty, the greatest, the highest, the one who is beautiful in holiness, the one who is fearful in praises, the one whose name is Yahweh, the one whose name is Yahweh, you are the one we have come to worship. Rise to your feet this morning. Rise to your feet and celebrate your God. Celebrate the ability of your Father. Celebrate the ability of your King. Celebrate the ability of your Maker. The one that does not retrieve in battle. He does not retrieve in battle. He is not threatened by what threatens you. No, 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 no. He is not threatened by what threatens you. He is the almighty God. He is the glorious Father. Oh, Jesus, we worship. Jesus, we worship. Jesus, we worship. You are the almighty. You are the almighty. You are the almighty. The great I am. We worship you, Lord. We praise you forever. Oh, thank you, Baba Father. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah.